Mario. My, that was my first grand. He developed severe headaches. His was brain cancer. And by the way, his father died and his grandmother on his father's side died from, and they lived in that area also. They died from cancer. And uh, Mario was, he was just all out of a jewel. He was, he was a fighter to the end. Cancer did him so bad till he asked us one morning, a couple of weeks before he died, Mama, when is Jesus gonna come and get me? I'm tired of hurting. My parents, my mom died last year. She died from cancer. My father been dead for 30 years. He died from cancer also. Neither one of them smoked. Neither one of them drank. I think our problem came from the pollution. Some of the same toxins that released by ABC, according to EPA, or the Superfund Division of EPA, every one of them is on my property. Oldest daughter, raised up in this house, every conceivable type cancer you could name. She had it, dead. Her sister, breast cancer, double mastectomy. In this picture is my nephew, Rodriguez Wilson. He has three types of cancer that he's battling now. And as far as this picture, we have just about every child in this picture has some type of respiratory problem. I myself have, I'm ten, like I said, a 10 year survivor of breast cancer. I have asthma. I have severe congestive heart failure, con uh, cardiomegaly. I have a seizure disorder. They told her it would be a chance to grow up out of it about three years ago. Like she wanna play, be a cheerleader like other kids, but can't, you know, her asthma. She been in hospitalized, especially when it's hard winds, when dust really picks up. Everybody gets sick. I had talked to my doctor about it. She said, maybe she said, since this stuff is in the air, she said, some of this is causing y'all conditions. People don't live here because of the air and then the condition of the asthma and stuff. Everybody gets sick in this air. The house right across from me, I know three people that I know died there. But it's been numbers of people around here that died. Now, my wife come out of Cottageville. I moved out of Cottageville up here. We stayed in this house here 20 some years, but we moved to our uh, center point. She was diagnosed with cancer. We made our move in, we got up out of here. If I could go another area, I would. Cause I want to live like everybody else. I want to live a healthy life too. Nothing sold in this area in the last 50 years. I need a loan on it right now. I can't borrow money off it because the appraiser said there's no value in this area because of those plants and the conditions that we're living in. All our property value went down. Mine went down to 34000 And it was fifty nine. I got a house went from a forty nine nine to forty two nine. And you wanna know why it ain't this plant? The pollution's been occurring for over a hundred years from the steel industry and the associated uh, manufacturing facilities for that. So we're dealing with two types of contamination issues out in North Birmingham. The legacy soil contamination and contamination of homes and whatnot. And then we have the current ongoing air toxics that appear to be present based on the EPA studies. These areas, these three neighborhoods, Fairmont, Heron Park, and Collegeville, are adjacent to these industrial areas. Those sources of where we feel like these contaminants have come into the neighborhood are possibly three routes. 
went through the air, you know, so whether it came out of a stack or maybe fugitive emissions, things that they're doing on the facility to create, generate dust, or maybe things blowing off of um, stockpiles. The second is possibly um, you know, through stormwater runoff, or maybe you know, these neighborhoods do periodically flood. That's a possible source. And then the third is, you know, historically, um, material from the facilities may have been taken from the facility and, and filled into low areas within these communities. It's on our porches. It's on the side of our houses. It's on the vowel side. I rinsed my bricks off once a week, and you could see it running off the bricks, off the mortar. I come in there and take a bath, and you could see this stuff running off your skin. On the side, that's the back side of Walter Coat, there's one, two, three, maybe four piles of black coal or whatever that is. So, you know, it's got to be coming from there because I know when the wind blows, you can hardly see up there. EPA came and spoke with us and told us that we're not to grow anything and eat it. My mother is a gardener. She planted and grew foods from that soil that they say was contaminated. We ate it. At one time, they were set telling us, don't eat out the garden. You plant a garden and couldn't eat at it. And if it's that bad, why would you want to stay here? By trade, I'm a pediatric nurse. I worked in peds for years and years. I saw babies coming out of Collegeville and other areas with having extreme respiratory problems, uh, retardation, short limbs, mm -hmm. anomalies that you don't see in other areas. And it's, they built a school for <laughs> our children on soil that was contaminated. Hudson was built on contaminated soil, and it was built prior to them receiving the uh, soil contamination report back. Most of the kids that attend Hudson School have breathing problems, so it's got to be something that's causing this. We is at Riggins Elementary School. They reopened it and had it off. Uh, what they call alternative school, and they had to close it back down because it was contaminated. They dug this soil up once, and then they came back and checked it again. It was still contaminated. I mean, if you close the school down next door to the project, and I'm talking about like next door, man. You've been down there, next door. They shut the school out and tell us that it's not affecting us. The colleague of mine wrote a book about Birmingham and he compared it to Johannesburg, South Africa because of the rigid segregation laws you had here where blacks could only live in certain areas of the city and whites were zoned to live in certain areas. You would have never put that kind of industrial complex in a zone for whites only community. And if you looked at it and you can actually see the areas that black people were zoned that they could only live in. And then you can also see where the concentration of industry is. So not only were blacks restricted to where they could live, but the industry, it seems like, sort of surrounded them as well. So all of this stuff is a continuation of the struggle for justice. I mean, it doesn't just end when someone says, oh, civil rights was the 50s or 40s or 60s. No, it will continue, I think, for as long as we have humans who either directly or indirectly try to exploit others because of their status. As we started doing our investigation and talking to families, we were talking to families who were telling us, you know, I'm sick, my father died of cancer, my mother died of cancer, my sister died of cancer, and before you know it, their neighbors were saying the same, the same thing and their neighbors were saying the same thing. So in any way, and that's when we ran into the 1989 document. We, you know, the 1989 document was the document where um, Walter Koch was ordered to test beyond the boundaries of their fence line and then to possibly clean up. We realized there were regulators and there were people who knew that there were serious concerns. The most shocking thing for us was finding out that 20 years later, Walter Energy still hadn't heated ADEMS 
recommendations. So when we went out and started finding the contaminants outside the fence line at these very high levels, um, you know, all of a sudden EPA jumped up, took notice, and, and required Walter Energy to go finally go out 20 years later and start assessing neighborhood contamination. And meanwhile, the community suffered through continual soil exposure and air toxics exposure. And uh, in my opinion, that was an extreme environmental injustice that was perpetrated. We refused to let up on EPA and the County Health Department. And so I think something had to be done. We weren't going away. And so eventually the Superfund declaration was made. You know, all of these industries across the country, you know, whether they're coke plants or they're steel plants or they're pipe fit, you know, whatever industries, these plants, the regulators, federal and state regulators, rely on their self-reporting. Self-reporting is, as you might imagine, problematic just in the mere nature of it. It's you're asking heavy industries to report and without any, you know, outside regulators double checking what they're releasing. You can determine very accurately what kind of releases are coming from the plants outside the fence line. I think it's called considered differential light absorption. It's a technique from what I understand where they use light rays and it's focused right outside the fence line and the EPA has always told us that they have no intention there, there is no plan to use the dial program you know I think it'd be great if they did because it would help to answer a lot of questions the Tonawanda plant in New York is very similar to some of the facilities that we're dealing with here in Birmingham. When they installed this monitor, the dial monitor, they found out that the benzene levels coming from this facility were up to 30 times higher than what the company was self-reporting. There's no reason why the leadership in the Department of Health and EPA shouldn't get behind this program. We need that testing here. We know that there is a, a pretty long history of these facilities polluting our water as well. So we're dealing with pollution in all areas. There is a groundwater plume underneath one of the facilities and it has migrated over to residential property. One of the most dangerous chemicals that's part of this plume is benzene. I was working for an above ground electrical installation company. We were bringing in multiple high voltage transmission lines into the plant. We encountered groundwater out there that was black. It had sort of an oily sheen on top of it, it had a real bad smell to it. I started swelling up. My, my body was, was reacting to something. And I called the plant safety folks out there and I said, we've got a problem. He told me on the phone, don't worry about it. It's probably just an old pocket of some benzene that was spilled out there years ago. When they pulled up on site and got out of the van, they were in Tyvek suits, they had the respirators, they were in hazmat suits. And I knew then there was a lot more to this than what we'd been told. My doctor did say, that I was ill because of exposure at this plant. And I have long-term, you know, lifelong effects from it today. I have to take medication every day of my life. My thyroid is gone. My doctor described it as a toxic cocktail of God knows what. And he advised me never to go back in that plant again. Well, all chemicals, depending on their characteristic, is can cause health threats. Um, you know, the main thing is what are the concentrations? How long is a person exposed, and to what concentration is it 
person exposed. Fortunately, with all the air data that we've been looking at, the air in the North Birmingham areas is acceptable. They did find some levels of lead in the soil, and lead definitely has a health effect on children. As far as some of the other chemicals, if you have very high levels for very long periods of time, some of them could increase your risk of cancer. The EPA samples and they, and they, you know, they get the environmental data and then they go to the ATSDR and they say, what does this mean for the people out there? My experience has been that ATSDR is, is fairly dismissive of the public concerns. I worked for the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry at the, through the Florida Department of Health in Tallahassee, Florida. After working three years there, I resigned and moved on because I realized that it was the ATS, the work that we were doing at ATSDR in the health assessment branch, which is essentially what ATSDR is doing out in North Birmingham, consisted of really bad science, poor public policy, it just was not serving the people well. Reports that they put out are, are not reliable. What I see is EPA trying to wrap this up and get home. That's my impression. <laughs> if this is a super fun site, they should make it a super fun priority. If they make it a super fun priority, maybe we'll get a little more help than we're getting. Because right now at the present moment, I don't see nobody doing nothing but looking out for themselves. The EPA is doing a good job, but I don't think they're doing the job they should be doing. I think they're manipulating a lot of people around here, but not me. You know, they could do much better than what they're doing. And then my thing is this here. I've always said, even if you was going to get married, you didn't know a person unless you live with them. Now, ain't none of them ever lived out here. You look at the wind rows, which is the pro you know, prevailing wind direction, for the last decade, it's to the northeast, and what we've been able to do is match up heavier contamination such as lead and arsenic and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons in communities and areas northeast of these major industrial complexes that we have down in, in uh, North Birmingham, which really gives me a concern for other areas outside of the North Birmingham community that haven't been addressed yet, such as Tarrant, in eastern North Birmingham and Wylam, those areas in, in uh, western North Birmingham. There's a lot of people with respiratory problems here in Tarrant City. You can go walk down the street and see them. COPD, yeah. Most of them's got it. So you've lost four children total? Mm-hmm. COPD is what many passed away with. That was the last one about three years ago. And Philistine passed away in 79 with sarcoidosis of the lungs. Her lungs just fermented like, oh, you see where cold burn them in a fireplace or a stove and they clink her up? They said that's what her lungs was. And then Minnie, they, she lived down here on Elizabeth Avenue. She had this lung disease and they told her she didn't get out of town. She it was going to kill her. So she moved to Gardendale and she lived, I guess, about five years after she moved out of the Tarrant area and just got worse. And one morning they went in there and she was dead in bed. I sleep out there in that back bedroom and a lot of nights the dust off of the plant out there will smother you to death. It's worse at night when all the fires and all is coming out the smokestacks. They don't never close that plant down. It goes 24 hours straight. It's just coated all over the house. I used to wash it off and I quit. You can't keep it washed off because by the time you wash it off, it comes right back. Tarrant, where ABC Coke is located, is not included in EPA's testing and uh, uh, testing of the soil, and it just doesn't make sense. ABC Coke is the worst contributor to toxic air pollution in the county, and yet, for whatever reason, they are being overlooked, and residents are being told that ABC Coke is not a problem, and that is absolutely not true. They are a significant problem. Our Superfund investigation right now is, is focused on these three communities of Fairmont, Harriman Park, and Collegeville. Um, so I am not familiar with any testing that's been done in Tarrant. 
and um, you know I can't speculate on where contamination may or may not be. Now, if if there's a reference and somebody says, hey, you know, we would like you to look into that. No, EPA is always following up on any reference that we get for any community that we have. Well, neither the local health department nor the state health department have indicated that there are any, you know, levels of uh, higher concentrations of illnesses. If a person feels that they are ill because of the contaminants or that a member of their family is ill, we recommend that they go and meet with a physician and, you know, get an examination to determine, first of all, what they were exposed to and what illnesses they may have. The Department of Health has not done a full assessment of how exposure to this pollution has affected people over the years. We have no real data. You know, just like I tell the residents, I, you can argue and you can complain as much as you want, but until you have the facts at hand, um, you know, it, it, it goes nowhere. It, it, it really doesn't mean anything. It would be nice if some sort of comprehensive health assessment could happen in order to tell them definitively. In 2012, UAB established what was called the Clean Air Initiative, and they actually sought out an investigator. She started doing some significant research, actually started testing people. Her research was abruptly halted. The Clean Air Initiative was essentially dismantled. We are left to believe that the financial connections between the University of Alabama's board's leadership and some of these polluting industries could have played a role in the dismantling of the Clean Air Initiative. That is a serious problem. If you're gonna do business in this community, there's a certain standard and a certain quality of life we expect for you to be involved with. You don't need to be, you need to minimize the pollution. And I think the technology is here to do that. You talk to young engineers today, you know, in college or just getting out of college, and from their perspective, the technology exists today to run all of these plants in a very, very clean, environmentally safe way. The Jefferson County Department of Health has the ability and has the authority to demand that the pollution be prevented and that technologies be employed to make sure that, this, that the pollution is significantly reduced. And the Jefferson County Department of Health is not doing that. Those industrial companies still in that North Birmingham community, those that are still operating today, they knew what was going on. Now they've done, made some efforts to clean up, but for them, um, I'm sure they'll argue it's costly. Well, I don't know what kind of price you put on a human life. Because of greed, there's nothing wrong with uh, 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 when people invest their money, they should get a a fair return on it, but not at the expense of killing people. If there's anything this documentary can do, I hope it will be to save our children, our next generation.